Let's Talk Oculus is brought to you by, well, you. If you want to know how to support the show, go to patreon.com forward slash playtest VR. Hey everyone, welcome back to Let's Talk Oculus. This is episode five. I can't believe it's episode five already. I'm Dan from Playtest VR, and I have with me my co-host Samson from Spreading VR. Samson, what's up? Hey Dan, thanks for having me. I'm very excited that starting next week we won't be able to, you know, count how many episodes we've done on one hand. <laughs> yeah, five episodes already, which has been awesome. So E3 is around the corner, actually June 13th. Now, E3 has always been a big gaming event. In fact, it's probably the biggest gaming event on the calendar, or at least it used to be. Um, and today we're going to discuss if VR actually needs to be at E3. Does it need to be at E3 to go mainstream? And we're going to talk about Oculus especially. Um, Oculus have confirmed that they're not going to be at the event. So we're going to discuss if they actually should be just to make it mainstream. And I've got a few community responses from Twitter. I put out the questions, so we're going to discuss them as well. But first, let's just talk about what, if you, if you like what you hear, consider subscribing to the podcast. It's on all good podcast platforms. Um, you can also check the video version out. You can see Samsung's beautiful face um, <laughs> on Playtest VR's YouTube channel. And if you have any questions, just send it to the show at letstalkoculus at gmail.com. Um, and if you want to support the channel, hit that link on the description. It's patreon.com forward slash playtest VR to throw a dollar at me and Samson and buy us a coffee because <laughs> Samson had an ant in his coffee just before we started recording <laughs> as he chuckles. All right, Samson. So once again, E3 used to be or still is the biggest gaming event on the calendar. Um, it is dampened slightly, I think, because Sony's pulled out. Sony's always been the biggest uh, leader, well, recently anyway, and they've pulled out for the last three years. But do you think that VR should be at E3? And to start off, are you excited about E3? All right. So this one was a difficult one for me uh, at first when you posed the question to me, because honestly, I haven't paid any attention to E3 in several years. Um, mm -hmm. I don't even think I could tell you one thing that was announced at any of the last, you know, three or three to five E3s. Um, I'm sure I've seen and played things that, that were announced, in, yeah. but uh you know, the event itself, um, which leads to me to believe that, you know, I just don't think E3 really need, you know, means much to VR. Uh, I don't necessarily think that VR needs it. I found VR without it. Mm -hmm. um, and sure, I think that there might be some VR games mentioned or shown off, um, but I don't really think that the mainstream will care at all or even see it. Um, the gamers who are interested in the game announcements and the trailers will, uh, you know, could potentially find that information elsewhere anyway, via content creators or upload VR, VR focus, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, and so like, I'm just, I don't know. I wouldn't go, I would say that VR does not need E3, mm -hmm. but uh, that that's not to say that E3 can't help VR, uh, you know, yeah. along a little bit but i don't think that e3 is going to put vr into the mainstream like that yeah definitely um we actually had a tweet from danny at digital firefly which kind of touches on that um he said it probably doesn't need it but it will certainly help quicken things along vr will slowly gain mainstream attention through the word of mouth actual experiences over seeing media coverage of something that can't be fully explained through the words um and flat videos so i think that's kind of what you're alluding on a little bit there um it is different it is completely true like seeing vr a vr trailer you never really get the sense of what the game feels like especially if we talk about the oculus quest a lot of these trailers are all from the pc vr versions if we look at the oculus showcase that just went on um after the fall which is one of my most anticipated games that gameplay looked amazing but that's pc vr footage you know, uh, and it's the same for most games that are on both platforms or multi-platforms. So, yeah, I, I, I can see that. The The question is, though, we know that Ubisoft or Ubisoft, Ubisoft. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure either. <laughs> <laughs> but they they have Assassin's Creed and Splinter Cell, which was teased 
at the um, original Oculus event that they showcased the Oculus Quest 2 uh, back in September. Um, they could have it on their conference floor. Their, their like show normally goes on for quite some time. Last year, I actually had a check and 1 million, just over a million viewers were on that stream of the Ubisoft conference. Uh, and the year before, it was about 750,000 people. So it's a lot of people. And they've been known to show off a wide variety once they had Nintendo on there to show um mario and rabbits and people love that you know they always have dance central they always have assassin's creed do you think them showcasing the oculus quest to like some gameplay of those games is going to entice some people who are just watching for ps5 news or do you think they'll just not be bothered about it and just wait for the skip just like they do for dance central yeah that's a very good question like someone who doesn't own a quest 2 are they going to see a trailer and then go out and buy one to play that game god i really don't know like it like you were saying the going into vr and experiencing something is so different from watching a trailer on a 2d screen Mm -hmm. and i i don't know i'm i'm hesitant to believe that 2d trailers will really convince uh i mean it might convince some people but i don't think the majority of people are going to go buy a headset uh because they saw an ubisoft game Mm -hmm. uh at e3 i've also uh read a little bit that ubisoft will be showing a lot more games at the summer games fest uh as opposed to e3 uh and it but summer game fest seems to be like right around the corner as well so I'm not sure how they're going to divide what they show where. Did you see that they announced a Far Cry VR, but like an actual like arcade experience for room scale? Yeah, I saw that. It looks pretty cool. And I think the the zombie movie that just came out on Netflix also uh, is coming out with a VR experience. I signed up nice. uh, for like pre-release tickets to the New York City one. Ho- hopefully I get it. Um, oh, cool. But I did... So you- sorry the vr experience you so you go to new york and you put on the headset while you do this experience before you watch the film um no i think it sort of like takes place in the world of the film Mm -hmm. uh and similar i think it's similar to what far cry where it's just like a completely separate like sort of little you're basically just using the ip for whatever experience game you're uh yeah you're playing i did see a tweet i forget who sent it but uh about the Far Cry VR experience that the tracking was just atrocious Mm. and that it actually turned some people off to VR, uh, Mm. which makes me a little nervous. I know. We've we've discussed it on this show before where with VR, I feel like you've got to hit the ball rolling with it, like with someone who's brand new. Otherwise, they could get turned off immediately. And it happens especially with motion sickness. So, yeah, um, I hope that doesn't persuade um some people but in the end of the day the far cry arcade experience is such a niche i think um i don't know if it's only available in the u.s but i feel like it's something that probably would be i you know i agree yeah yeah so i i feel like yeah the far cry experience is going to be uh, cool for people who are doing like parties i remember when i was on the um vr verdict podcast uh, PJ and Wookie there, they were talking about that they used to, um, I think they went twice to this zombie experience where it would be the whole thing, like the whole room it might be similar to the film that you're going to, that you're going to see. It might be similar to that experience, but the whole room was um, packed full of like real zombies, but then you'll put the headset on and then you um, go about just shooting and, and slaying zombies basically, which seems did seem like fun, but I don't know if that would persuade someone to buy a VR, you know? I think yeah, the notion exactly. of I think the notion of VR just needing a high end PC and being VR being expensive in general is one of the main issues with it in terms of uh, the marketing for it to go to mainstream. But I guess once again, like with Ubisoft, they have a cool Assassin's Creed experience or a Splinter Cell experience. Now, did they say that these were Oculus exclusives? Can you remember that back in the in the showcase, like when they uh, teased it? Uh, I do not remember. Uh, it would not surprise me if oculus worked out that that deal though uh similar yeah. to resident evil mm-hmm. yeah that's true that's true um let's talk about nathy's tweet so nathy tweeted at me after i put, posed the question he said i remember the hype when bethesda announced skyrim fallout and doom vr live streams will attract a huge audience something vr doesn't have so that's the case of having it at the ubisoft conference um but 
you know, it's one of those things that you just got to wait and see. Um, I think because of Ubisoft's conference is so long, throwing a couple of teasers in there, I don't think it's going to do anything, um, to be honest, which um, which gives me on to Lipnox's tweet. Now, we should have Lipnox on the show one day. Um, definitely. He's a, he's a great guy. He always talks about side quest more than anything. Uh, and Rec Mumi has a good, lot of good VR content. But his tweet was an interesting one. Um, it was, I don't think E3 matters to the new generation who are critical to VR's mainstream adoption on a grand scale. Look at what happened every time a VR game was shown during the state of play. That's the PlayStations, um, like Nintendo Direct or Oculus Showcase. Um, he says, every time a VR game got shown at that state of play, people will cry about it. And then he goes on to saying, those who are interested will watch the Oculus event. And he said he loves the days of E3, but he doesn't think it's a good tool to promote your games anymore. And what I wanted to um, say about this one is that I looked on IGN's website. Now, IGN is probably one of the biggest gaming websites, um, gaming news websites. I think a lot of you get love and hate for the IGN. I, I'm, I've always been, a, um, been fond of them. But I noticed on their website, they don't have a VR section on the side. They have a section for obviously uh, PS5, Xbox, PC, Nintendo, etc. cetera. Um, they have P um, tech, which I guess where Oculus Quest 2 would fall under but they don't have a VR um, section there. So I think if a VR was pushed in E3, especially, I think that maybe one day that they could have a VR section. And I think that's when the mainstream part happens, you know, and yeah. it'd be interesting to see if they add that VR section when the PS VR two comes out. Yeah. It's sort of like the uh, chicken and the egg, right? Like if IGN starts record or re reporting on VR mm -hmm. news, uh, then people more of the mainstream would see it on their site and maybe, you know, take a few clicks there. Um, I mean, the, the content is certainly there to be reported on, like as proven by upload VR, VR focus, VR scout, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, you got to convince IGN that the there's readers out there for that content. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And just to touch on Nathie's tweet uh, compared to Danny's tweet, I agree much more with Danny than I do Nathy. And VR, I think, will spread through word of mouth, which is partly why I'm constantly pushing VR on my friends and, and just hoping that, you know, they'll pass on a positive experience uh, to somebody else and then maybe mm -hmm. that gets them to try it, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm, I'm very focused on trying to get my friends and family and everybody I know to try VR and to make that first experience very positive. Yeah. Didn't you mention before we recorded the show that um, you got someone else into VR this past weekend? Yeah. So one of my friends who's an avid gamer um, who's been trying to, he's just been waiting to buy a PC before he bought into VR. And I was like, dude, you're doing it backwards Buy the quest Two then get the PC whenever, you know, yep. whenever you want. And uh, this past weekend, I started him, obviously, in the tutorial, like I always do. Um, and then uh, I had definitely put him in virtual, virtual reality, because I know he like he likes creative writing and that type of uh, that type of game. And then from there, man, this this dude, I've never had I've never shared somebody with VR and they were able to just play hours like I've never seen that wow. before. And he just kept going. He was so he took a little break and then I put him I booted up my shadow PC and we played a little Half-Life Alex and um, uh, Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. Nice. Um, Half-Life is definitely more of a game he'd be inclined to play, whereas Walking Dead, I don't think is his type of game. But I wanted mm -hmm. to show him, uh, you know, the excellent graphics of the PC and just how it felt. Yeah. And uh, at the end of the day, he was like, yeah, I think. <laughs> I think you convinced me. I think I'm going to get one of these. Yeah. Yeah. Which, um, which, which makes me think like maybe that's why Oculus should be at E3. Now I haven't looked too much into E3. I don't know if they're doing a full convention like normal um, or if that will be back to next year and it will be like that. But I feel like having those experiences at the convention floor, all those people in there, I think that's going to, now they've had, that before in 2019 they were there they were showing off lone echo and teasing lone echo 2 back in 2019 um being on the oculus floor but it's, it's so little press 
um small booths that's it like it's just a few experiences and it's, it'll come away from someone would be walking they'll probably try it and like yeah that was a cool experience and that's it they need to have much more of a bigger presence and i think with sony not being there anymore there's there's space there's space on the floor and i'm not saying they're going to be as big as sony in terms of their space but there's space on the floor and i think doing what you just did like them coming in with the, okay, these are the essential games that you should try or have like a little bit of a tailored list. They come in and you go, here's a questionnaire. What type of games do you like? And, and such like a five question questionnaire. Okay. I'm going to put you into Beat Saber or I'm going to put you into Walking Dead or you want more something like a PC experience. Let me um, show you how the link works, you know? Right. Here's the thing though. Like the, the audience of E3 isn't, uh, or, like E3 is not for the consumers, right? It's only people who get that press pass or. Uh, well, you uh, can are... you can buy tickets to there now. They are they did make it consumer friendly, yeah. For this year or for all years, like because this sure year is about... different because it's remote, right? Yeah, uh, this year might be different, but I think I want to say in 2017 or 2018, um, they announced that you can now buy tickets for E3 as well. I got you. So regular consumers can go, but yeah, it used to be just press only before. So I got I got I got to read up on my E3, you know. I mean, if they don't have VR, then what's the point, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What's the point? But and then Sony's not going to be there, so I know Sony said that they're going to come out with some more information about PSVR this summer. Um, obviously, not going to be at this E3 because they're just not going to be at E3 for them. So they'll have their own conference. So we'll see. To be honest, my my thoughts on there, like. It would just be nice to see VR there and, and same at Gamescom later on um, and all of the PAX East, PAX West, PAX West. Like, just get more and more out of it. I know they're like the more dedicated gamers, shall I say, who are at these places. Um, but even them, I've seen it on the Reddit posts. I've seen it on, there was a big Reddit thread a couple of weeks ago about hating on like content creators and how like they get too excited about different updates. But I was seeing the comments on there and people were saying how, yeah, VR's got nothing. It's like not got any cool IPs or anything like that. And obviously me and you and the audience of the show both know that's not true at all. So um, I think even they need to be more convinced. Uh, I don't know what the numbers are on how good the Oculus is doing, but I, I'm, I agree with you. I do align more with Danny's tweet and it doesn't need it, but it will certainly be beneficial. I don't think it's ever going to be detrimental at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Um, I was just going to ask as well, because you mentioned Shadow PC. How, how's the Shadow PC working well with VR? Um, it works pretty well. So uh, I, I guess I can sort of compare it now because my friend who I, my other friend was uh, helping me introduce uh, mm -hmm. him into VR. And he, so he uses PC VR uh, with his reverb and he's done um, Airlink with his Quest 2. Yep. And now he's done a uh, virtual desktop via shadow. And he said he didn't really notice like much latency when he moved his head, but he, mm -hmm. he could notice it more in the controllers, but it wasn't, it wasn't like, it didn't make it a terrible experience. He just noticed it compared comparatively. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it works, it works quite well. They just changed. So they declared like either chapter 11, I believe bankruptcy a few months ago. Okay. And last month they just changed their subscription model. And now uh so I was paying like fifteen or sixteen dollars a month for uh the base package and some extra space hard drive space. Mm -hmm. Now it's uh thirty dollars a month. Um mm -hmm. so it's definitely an increased uh in price. I'll probably cancel it. I wanted to keep it uh so I could show my friend all those games. I knew I'd want yeah. it on the go. Yeah. Um so, but you can like shut it off, turn it on, shut it off, turn it on. Yeah. So in that way, I, I kind of like it because like if a PC VR game comes out that I really want to try and play, I'll mm -hmm. get it for the month. I'll play it that month and then maybe I'll cancel and move on. Yeah. Have you, has it ever like thrown you off VR? Do you ever, ever worry about because of the latency? If you're showing these new people VR, it will throw them off. Are you worry um, about that at all? Is it pretty solid in terms of the performance? No, I'd say it's pretty solid. I wouldn't have thrown them into a, a VR rhythm game uh, yeah. in it, but a game like Half-Life or uh, Walking Dead, where you don't really need those super no. duper fast mo uh, movements. Something a bit more, a bit more slow paced. Yeah, definitely. 
Um, also, right, well, now we're just on the topic of the E3 and such. Do you think that the, you know how we just had an Oculus Gaming Showcase, do you think there'll be more regular ones of these? Like, oh, God. Like something so. like a state of play? Yeah, I definitely, one, I hope so. Two, I think so. Yeah. Um, as, I mean, as they get more and more AAA developers and AAA games, uh, they're they're going to need to have a place to show them off. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I do, I think the Oculus showcase we got and we, we were a little, it was, <laughs> it was a little underwhelming, right. For us. Cause we just saw like, we just made it much bigger in our heads. Yeah. I think everyone and, did though. I, everybody did like all yeah. of our, all of our predictions from us and all the other creators that we had on that show. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we did a bonus episode before we even started this podcast and it's on playtest VR's YouTube channel which is my YouTube channel. I just said myself in third person. <laughs> um, that was an Oculus Quest showcase predictions. And we had about, um, I think we had about almost 10 different people from the VR space, whether it be the BMF show um, or Lipnox um, or Mateo. We had a bunch of people giving their predictions. And I think it's safe to say after we watched the comments, all of our predictions are way too out there because we all got too excited. Yeah, but I do think what we all had in our heads could come in the future. Yeah. I think, I think one day in the future, um, I don't think this year or anything, but I think one day in the future, it, it could be as big as that. Um, I'm just interested in that because in September is when they normally have their big events, right? The big Facebook connects, which mm -hmm. um, I don't know if they'll show off a new hardware then, but you know, they'll show off something or they'll be quite big. Are they going to, there's still a few months before that. So are they going to have something in between? Because it is E3, it is the gaming summer, right? This is where a lot of announcements come out. Um, I saw PlayStation tweet about After the Fall, which is a title that's going to come to the Quest and PC VR um, about an hour ago before we started filming this podcast with just extra, it didn't start tell you like in terms of um extra stuff about the release it was more just more about the game you know they gave you some extra developer uh insights which that game looks awesome um but i'm wondering if they're gonna show off another gaming showcase just before or just show what what your full lineup is because um the walking dead got delayed which was a dlc that was announced which should already be out um and they did not put a date to it we still don't know anything about a second half of the um, star wars right um, right. same as same as Jurassic World um, there's a bunch of games and then in, in this in the fall I don't know what the lineup is like I know Resident Evil's coming out at the end of the year sometime in 2021 Halloween probably yeah but probably. we don't know anything else what's happening right and it'd be interesting to see if they throw in a showcase next month just to keep with the rest of the gaming news or they want to let E3 settle and then they come out with it so they don't get um Mm. thrown under the bus where all these amazing ps5 titles get announced you know yeah nobody cares about the oculus ones oh. um yeah that's very true though like <clears throat> even in the storefront uh like in the coming soon there's only ever like two games and they're usually within one or two weeks of release at that mm -hmm. point mm -hmm. um and i have no idea what could possibly come out next month like yeah. there's this like what four or five games that we know are coming eventually but mm -hmm. we have no dates on them mm -hmm. um which is a problem i think i think Things. that uh, they don't want to they don't want to get stuck hyping something up and then like like with walking dead and having to delay it a little bit like i yeah. think they'd much rather release a finished quality product um whenever they feel it's ready mm -hmm. and then kind of just and then give it to us i don't yeah. they, they they're not about the hype train they're not about the hype train which i think is a problem like i think it's yeah. an issue with it right now because you're right it's it's good not to announce it way in advance i know sony and microsoft have both fallen into that trap of teasing a game two or three e3s before it actually comes out or it just gets delayed until then which I, I agree that they shouldn't do that. But the fact is, for example, Carve Snowboarding came out of nowhere. Like we knew it was coming this summer, but all of a sudden they said, yeah, it's coming out in two days. And it's like, wait, what? Which is great for us because we're like, oh, awesome. We're going to have a new Quest game to play this week. But for the people who are on the fence of buying it, if they go, oh, what games should I buy? Okay, we have this, this, this. Great. All right, what games are coming out soon? 
You know, what, what am I looking forward to? Does Is there any support in the future? And for us, we know there's support because the amount of updates that they put out and such, but for the regular consumer who's going into a, a GameStop or, or whatever they are in the US or such, <laughs> they are yeah. GameStop, right? We get, we, we get those, yeah. Yeah, you got those. Um, they're actually not called that in Canada, but it doesn't matter. E- EB but, Games up there? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, same old, same old. But the regular person who goes into that, all they know is the PS5 and the Xbox. They don't know uh, Oculus. And if they pick it up, they go, oh, what's this Oculus? Oh, it's standalone? Okay. Um, they look at the back of the box and they see Beat Saber, Star Wars and such, and they're awesome. But they have no idea what's coming out this fall. So um it'll be good to see if uh, okay we can anticipate a few titles all they know all we know is resident evil and i know that sold quests already i know that for a fact <laughs> That's um cool. but they need more of that they need more 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 things well to here's forward to. here's the thing though like if you let's say you're like oh i'm gonna buy this quest to resident evil 4 i love that game this is gonna be amazing and then it comes out you bought your quest to just for this game and it's a dud and now you're going to not only be upset that you've spent, you know, four hundred dollars on a quest two in the game, uh, but you're probably gonna spread that upsetness and you're gonna, you know, make a Reddit post, you're gonna tell people this thing sucks. And like that is something that Oculus uh does not need, and like that that like it's not I'm much, needs. Yeah, exactly. I'm much I appreciate the secrecy and the quiet uh, because I don't, I don't want, you know, people to be uh, too put off. And yeah, exactly. Off. Exactly. Yeah. That's fair. And that might be, that might be the strategy that Facebook are going with uh, on this one, but, but yeah, so they're not going to be at E3, but we might see Assassin's Creed and uh, or other VR games like just shown off that it might just be multi-platform uh going forward all right so let's move on to what we're playing now um samson what have you been playing this week have you got a lot of vr in or has it been a bit of a dud week for you uh no i've i've surprisingly traveled and fit in a good amount of vr and shared oh. vr oh. Um, is it vr day <laughs> week yeah yeah outside of uh outside of the showing the three new people vr uh i've gotten a little more into carve um Probably about an hour, hour and a half more. Um, what, are your, um, what are your thoughts on Carv now that you've played a bit more? Are you starting to like it more? Or? Yeah, I, uh, I'm figuring out the tricks a little bit more. And uh, this morning, I was just like, you know what? I'm, I'm kind of in the mood to like go down a mountain right now. Like, I <laughs> wanted to like get in the cold, get in my boarding gear, um, so to say, and, uh, and just snowboard a bit. And this is a former um, person who does not snowboard or ski. <laughs> yeah yeah in fact i hate the real thing um but yeah do i see myself you know constantly playing this game every week certainly not but like are there days where i have the itch to want to snowboard and yeah and i'll hop in then mm-hmm. um so carve uh oh the han solo table uh pinball star wars pinball that came out i think late last week or last yeah. week sometime yeah um i was able to hop into that for a little bit um and Honestly, I, I kind of like it. It's one of my favorite tables now. Yeah. Um, and the music that played during it, or at least part of it, is uh, from like the band that the like the classic Star Wars band, you know, do 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 yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so That's I was cool. enjoying That's that. Fun. Yeah. Um, what else? Synth Riders, uh, my favorite mapper, Fasty. He uh, released a map a few weeks ago. I wasn't able to play it till this week uh, called Bella Chow. Mm. And uh, I think I actually posted a video of that me doing that one in mixed reality on my uh, spreading VR YouTube channel. If you're interested, um, and then... always, it's always I, I feel like if the if the week goes by and Samson hasn't played Synth Riders, he's probably sick or something. Something's <laughs> going on, like something major's going on. I need to ask him, are you okay? One hundred percent. And then one other interesting thing I got into. Um, so there's a VR game, a PC VR game coming out called Lo-Fi. And uh, mm-hmm. I think you can pick it up on Itch.io right now. It's pre-release. And uh, the developer of that released a tech demo called Agency. Uh, and it's on App Lab. And if you're searching for it on App Lab, it's called Agency and then a bracket, tech demo, end bracket. 
because uh, on App Lab you have to get that exactly right. Um, and there's no like moving around, but visually it looks freaking awesome. Like honestly, I'm looking around. I'm like, how did he even get this lighting into the Quest Two? Um, is Lofi it's... is that is that the one that's like a cyberpunk world? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So this one, yeah. the tech demo, kind of like like looks like the cyberpunk world, mm -hmm. um, and it just sort of it like I don't know. It was like 15, 20 seconds each. It's like different points in the game, I think, uh, where you just kind of look around and you can see a few of the NPCs um, and just sort of take it in. Um, okay, so there's no like, there's no kind of action. It's more just a exactly. visual thing for now. I mean, it is a tech demo, right? So yeah. yeah. Exactly. Are you impressed on how, like you said, you're impressed by the lighting and such. Um, was there any, I know it's only a tech demo, but was there any like glitches or anything like that? Or... Um, I didn't, I mean, uh, at one point there's like a robotic police officer and to go through the door, he just like walked through the wall. Okay. But like, that's, that's like, seems normal tech demo -y stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. I didn't really notice any like stuttering or like the thing just crashed uh, or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, yeah, if you're, if you're interested, you know, download it. It's free on app lab. It'll take you less than five minutes to experience the entire thing. Oh, sweet. Yeah. I'd definitely check that out because uh, I'm interested in that game. Cause I remember when they first showed it off and I was like, this seems way too much for an Oculus quest Two. Yeah, I don't. I don't think he's gonna. I don't think Lo-Fi is gonna be a quest to at least not right off the bat. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, it definitely looks like a cool game and worth checking out if you're uh, if you're into PS PC VR. Yeah. Um, but what about you? What you've been playing? Well, I've been playing a lot of Beat Saber just because I'm into this Interscope record that they've put on. Um, mostly just because I. I just keep want to do um, limp by limp biscuit rolling, and I want to try and get to expert level. I'm currently I've just finished hard, and I'm like, because I I can't play Beat Saber on expert or anything, and uh, some of the hard levels I can do, some of them aren't like they're not all equal. Like there's some songs which are just brutal, um, <laughs> absolute workout as well. But what I wanted to talk about Beat Saber and Samson, I feel like you've seen that on, the same thing on your quest is that there's always a tracking issue um, with, with the, with it. And it's always for some reason been my left, left controller. I've never had any tracking issues in any other game unless it's like too dark, but like I'm in a well, well lit room wearing just a t-shirt. So I'm not like wearing a big jacket that's like in the way of its, of its tracking. But for some reason, like I, I mean, sometimes it does happen on the right too, where I will miss if I'm not looking at the blocks and I'm just like looking straight and you have to kind of do that when it's on a harder level, you kind of just want to keep your focus and just, just go. Sometimes it just misses it. Like it misses it um, just because it's not tracked it. And all of a sudden the controller goes and then I, I, I lose the high score, which I know is a first world problem, but you know, it's, <laughs> it can be slightly annoying. And um, I heard Samson, you got the same issues sometimes yeah I've, i forgot to mention that i did uh play a little bit of beat saber um late last week uh the roland song uh the kendrick lamar song and yeah. a couple of the other ones but yeah i was a hundred percent experiencing that as well and i'm not i wasn't sure if it was because i have like the 3d printed uh covers over like the halo part mm -hmm. of the controller but i mean i never lose tracking i play master level synth riders like every day mm -hmm. uh never lose and it might be because with synth riders i always have the controllers in front of me yeah whereas with beat saber the controller is often ending up like behind like at my waist or like slightly behind or on the side right? exactly and i think that's when it loses it and then i go back up and it takes it a second to refine mm -hmm. uh my saber so to say but uh after playing like synth riders on master level and like getting a perfect like going back to or playing Beat Saber on hard and like missing one because of that BS is like <laughs> the most frustrating thing in the world. Yeah, it is definitely frustrating. And I remember because I haven't played Beat Saber for a while, to be honest, until this um, until this came out. And I remember it happened before and it really did put me off on the game. And you're right. I think the way Synthride is designed as well, you're not waving the controllers as much. It's more of you kind of punching in front of you, aren't you? Or, or mm -hmm. putting your hands or, or synth riding, you know? Um, but yeah, I just noticed it Beat Saber. And I don't think I've noticed it in any other game, even with carved snowboarding, the, the controllers are by my side. Mm -hmm. 
but it still gets it pretty well. And Powder VR as well, which is a PC VR um, a snowboarding and skiing game, it does the same thing as car snowboarding, where you can put your hands by your side. And it's, that's an early access and it's still tracking them fine. I don't know if that uses more of an emotion rather than actual. I mean, it still needs to see it, but maybe the way Beat Saber goes really fast, it's just, it just misses it. But it's definitely a concern. And I don't know if it's because of the Quest or if I did Oculus Link, it would be better. If it is actually a Quest tracking problem or is it the same on um, different VR headsets? I'm not sure, but I... Yeah, it's interesting how you've got the same problem and you've got the um, the little rubber straps, right? The 3D mm-hmm. printing mm-hmm. printed protectors on it. But yeah, I was so when you mentioned it happened to you, I was like, huh, how does anybody play this game on Expert Plus? Mm. And honestly, I feel maybe like they're just playing out in front of them and just like flick at a wrist, you know? Maybe. Uh, maybe we so, just don't know how to play properly. Exa- yeah, that's sort of what I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm like, maybe I'm just playing this game wrong. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, maybe we're just too slow, so it is going to the side of us, and yeah. then we're trying to hit him, and it's, it's already gone. If but, you know how to play Beat Saber, get at us in the comments. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let us know comments or on Twitter or something. Let us know how to play Beat Saber, because it seems like <laughs> we might be doing something wrong, because it feels like everyone loves this game, and I didn't hear much about or anything of that tracking issue, so it must just be us, Samson. <laughs> it, must just, it must just be us, but... I'm interested to see what happens. So I'm also playing Smash Drums um, a lot. I think every week I kind of say I'm playing Smash Drums. I do really like that game. That's a little bit different to Beat Saber where you're drumming, but it's in front of you because it is drums. Some of them are like on the side, but it's not as far side as as sometimes the Beat Saber ones can go. Mm -hmm. But I'm interested to see. I've not mastered it to get to expert plus level on that yet, but I think as soon as I do and it gets really quick, I wonder if the tracking goes, but... That is still an early access. So, um, yeah, that, that actually game that comes out on the 17th of June. So there's one to look forward to. Um, I freaking love it. And I've just played it in early access right now because I've been lucky enough to, to have that access. And I, I freaking love it. I think it's because of the music. Like, none of the music, I've not heard of one of those songs before. It's very punk, indie. There's a couple metal tracks and such. I've not heard of any of them. I don't even recognize any of them. Um, to be uh, to be fair, I could say the same to Beat Saber and Synth Riders in terms of their original packs, you know, before they get DLCs. But we've not heard of them. But some of the songs are really good, and just drumming seems so natural and 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 good in VR. I'm surprised that no one's ever done it before. Um, so I think this is going to be a, a good hit, and I, I feel like I hope I really hope it's going to be a, a smash hit. But the interesting thing is that it's coming out on June 17th, but to App Lab, like not to the actual Oculus Quest store. store. Yeah. Um, so I'm unsure why that is. And uh, maybe they just haven't got the licenses done yet. I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. And see if they actually have a proper release soon. But yeah, I've been playing a bunch of that. And right now, to be honest, I know you really want me to play Demio. <laughs> and I just haven't got around to it. Um, that's the next game that I really do buy. Um, but there's a few games that have been sent to me uh, which I'll have videos out for soon that just want like just gameplay videos. So I'll showcase a few of them, but I- I'll talk about them more on next week's podcast because I haven't played them yet. Um, and I have videos out before. So yeah, that's what I've been playing. Uh, Samson, before we close out, I just want to ask you in terms of the hand solo table, is, is Star Wars pinball becoming one of those games that you just jump in now and again, and it's nice and relaxing and you've, you, you like liking it more and more as as you as you keep it on your quest system. Um, well, it had been a couple of weeks probably since I'd played it last. Um, right. So I don't think it's at a, a daily or weekly uh, level for me. But every once in a while, I get the urge. Um, and it's nice to play seated. So like to have the yeah a seated option game. Um, yeah, definitely. And you have you heard anything else about the new walkabout mini golf map? Ooh, nothing? yeah. Uh, well, they posted a picture on the Discord, I believe, of the first hole, mm. um, and so it's uh, it's progressing uh, it's progressing along. And they showed a model of like the unlockable um, club or what, what they. It was like I think it was a model of the club that they scrapped, but yeah. uh, it it looked cool. It was like a pickaxe one. Oh, um, and so, I mean, it doesn't say how long it'll be, but probably be in beta pretty shortly, I imagine. 
Yeah, I, I expect it to be out probably really soon then if they're showing yeah. out screenshots now. I guess they still haven't put anything out publicly that's not on the Discord, yeah. like nothing on, on the Twitter or anything yet. So, But this might be just something that they just released. They'll be like, okay, new update. Here's the next update and here's our, our Western Wild West, right? That's the actual theme. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, which would be which would be cool. So, yeah, very lo- very much looking forward to that one. But um, Samson, you got anything else you want to discuss, or are we all um, good for this year? Oh, actually, yeah, there were two games that I hopped into last night for about twenty minutes each. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pickup league hockey on App Lab. Uh, so How is that, was, that game? It was honestly, <laughs> it was a little bit more fun than I thought it would be. Uh-huh. Uh, it's a little odd, like skating honestly and like with the stick it's a little weird uh i think the team i was playing against had played a good amount because they can do things with the puck that i was like i don't even i don't even know how you do that and then there's no mic in the game so you have to like be on a discord Mm. call with someone or something like that that's a weird Um, that's that's very odd it was that was an odd odd but it is app lab it is it is app lab um it is app lab Mm -hmm. um and it made me want to get you know, three of my friends to play a little two on two or potentially a three on three game where we can all sort of be on a, the same discord call yeah. pretty easily. Um, and the other game was gym class, which is, yeah. uh, yeah, I know I saw like BMF post a couple videos on it a month or two ago. And, uh, one of my friends is pretty into like these social apps. So we hopped in and, uh, it was me, my friend, and then one random person and the random person really helped us out. So it was like, oh. here, this is how you jump. This is how you do this. Um, and the game, the game was pretty cool. Uh, shooting felt very, very odd. And I was not good at it. But mm-hmm. like dunking uh, was, it felt pretty freaking cool. I won't lie. Mm-hmm. I was like, huh, I've never been able to do this. So you can like, <laughs> you like click the joystick in. And when you release, and depending how long you hold it, you'll jump higher. Yeah, and so you'll just jump upon release, and then you can grab onto the rim and dunk it if you oh, want. Awesome. Um, one thing threw me off. Well, and that game has a mic, uh, yeah. so that was that was nice uh, as far as like socializing and being able to talk. Um, but one thing that threw me off is that it's only head movement, so you can't like turn with the joystick mm. at all. So if you want to do a three hundred and sixty dunk, you actually have to do a three hundred and sixty. Um. And I'm just so used to turning uh, with the yeah. stick that that was uh, throwing me off. But definitely you could get used to it. And I understand why, because if you're doing a 360 dunk, you want to actually do it. Um, yeah, of course. But, but BMF but got that addicted game, to that game, right? <laughs> yeah. And it's kind of like, uh, I would liken it to like Gorilla Tag. You know, you got to be weary of your surroundings. Yeah, I always thought that, to be honest. When I saw him doing these dunks and such, I was like, okay, I don't know where I can do this. Probably have to do this out, out on the lawn or something. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, that does look like a, a fun concept. I've always yeah. looked at that, but I've never never, yeah. never tried it out. And both those games are, are free, so if you want to pick them up or, or look into them, they're very easy to uh, download, jump in, and if you don't like it, just uninstall it. Speaking about the hockey one, it's actually reminded me of one that I really want to check out. And that's the football one that's already on Oculus Store. It's called, like, is it 2MD Football or something like that? I believe so, yeah. They're coming out with a big update real soon. They keep teasing it um, with lots and lots of new content. So it's something that I want to kind of dive into. It feels like it could be fun just to throw the football around. Um, yeah, I've seen I've seen videos of that. I think BMF released a video on that like a long time ago. Yeah, um, ages ago, yeah. Yeah, and it just seemed uh, a little, like, tech demo- demo-y to me. Um, mm. Like, I don't know, like, it would be cool to, like, throw passes, but how yeah. long am I really going to, you know, think that's yeah. cool? You know? Maybe if you're maybe if you're a big football fan, um, you'll be into it. I'm just true. getting up now. Yeah, they have a new Challengers Edition update, um, which has... Just they've completely like revamped the style. There's different plays that you can put in. I'm just looking at this on the Twitter. Yeah. Four new leagues. Um, they have college players. They have a hard difficulty in. Um, it seems like they've revamped it quite a lot, but no release date on it. Good. But they tweeted that out on the second of June, so um, not long ago, uh, actually yesterday on, yeah. on recording. So 
yeah, it looks like it's going to come out very soon. It'll be interesting to see if, like, from the tech demo, maybe now it's um, more polished, Progress. more fully, yeah. more yeah, fully vamped. But I definitely, I mean, oh, sorry, yeah. I definitely like the idea that they're uh, staying active, the developing team. Like, uh, I, I, I am inclined to support that. Yeah, definitely. Um, I actually really interested in this hockey game now. Is it just standing? <laughs> like you just you don't move around, right? It's just yeah, it's just standing, and you use one joystick to go forwards and backwards, and the other one to turn. Um, and that's that's pretty, pretty much, much the controls. Is it very? Yeah. It, could it could it be? Could it get motion sickness? Could you think how it's, um, how it's designed? Oh god, it's kind of hard for me to tell. I didn't feel like I was moving really fast at any point. Uh, there mm. is like a sprint button, but you're not you're not moving that fast. I presume if you were new to VR, though, you wouldn't want this to be, you know, one of the first few games that you played. Um, it reminds me of this. Could you ever play this like robot um, VR football game that was on the PSVR? I can't remember what it was called. There no. was a there was a there was a VR game which is is escaped me. But when I used to have the PlayStation VR, it was one of the like big games on there, which was. The way it was designed, it was like basically NFL, um, um, and it was very good. But I got so much motion sickness in that game, and the, the way the movement was and such. So I'm wondering if the hockey game could have that. But that's something I need to check out. And to be honest, I, I haven't checked out that many App Lab games. And yeah, that's something that I need to go into. And I think there's a lot of cool experiences, and there's there's the, quite a lot of them on there now, right? It's yeah, App Lab. Out. Yeah, App Lab's very packed with a with a wide array of content. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not quite as much as SideQuest, obviously, but uh, there's yeah. a good amount uh, good amount on App Lab. Yeah, perfect. Um, Is there anything you're looking forward to for before the next podcast? Is there anything that you're going to sink your teeth in? Um, well, there's some new like single player RPG game that came out today. Um, okay. A few, I saw a few, uh, a few. I think VR review and. Uh, Oh god! If beyond, uh, not beyond realities. Uh, RR is there. I forget. Uh, oh, rendered reality. Yeah, rendered reality. Release a video yeah. on it as well, and yeah. I think VR Dynamite. But uh, it's sort of like a, I don't know, like you're a mage or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it it had a pre order discount, which first time I've seen that. Yeah. Uh, so it was like eight ninety nine. I was like, sure, why not? Sure. Uh, <laughs> So uh, yeah, I'll yeah. be diving into that a little bit just to just to see what that world's like. Awesome, sweet. So yeah, stay tuned, and we'll, we'll talk about that probably next week. Um, and that's that's everything for me. Um, Samson, anything else? Are you all good? Good to go. Thanks for having me. Thanks for awesome. listening, everybody. Yeah, thanks for listening. As we move on to episode six next week, it's, it's just so crazy. We're getting closer to our big episode ten. Oh yeah. Well, I've been Samson. And I've been Dan. Thanks a lot for watching and listening, guys. Uh, we'll see you in the next one.